Hey, welcome to a new video. You probably clicked on this video because you want to know my story or you don't understand why somebody would leave a country like the Netherlands and move to China. In this video, I'm going to tell you why I moved to China. If you are subscribed to my channel, you probably know that this is the first video I am sharing after finishing up my 10 years in China series. In that series, I have shared a lot of my thoughts and opinions about living, working and traveling in China. In the introduction video of the series, I explained how my plan of staying in China for six months turned into living and working here for 10 years. What I have never shared on my channel though, is why I left the Netherlands in 2010 and why I decided to come to China. So with the series done and with thousands of new subscribers, thank you and welcome, I thought it would be the perfect time to tell my story of why I came to China. There are many reasons why I came to China. My love for traveling, the thirst for adventure and exploration, and my ambitions, to name a few. I will cover all of those, but let's start with traveling. You might think that the decision to come to China was made in 2010. And although I decided in that year to come to China, it didn't come out of nowhere. There were many events that led up to that moment, and some of those events had to do with traveling and getting to know new cultures. As a child, I grew up in a small town that would host a folkloric dance festival every year. Traditional dance groups from all over the world would come to my hometown and perform their dances. Every year, my family would host members of these dance groups. Over many years, we hosted people from Malaysia, Bolivia, Kazakhstan, Russia and other countries. Being exposed to different countries and cultures taught me, as a young girl, that there was more to the world than just the town I was growing up in. As I grew older, I knew that there was going to be a day that I would leave the Netherlands and travel the world. That day came in 2005, when my family and I embarked on a three-week adventure to Malaysia to visit people we had met 10 years earlier during the dance festival. It was my first experience with traveling outside of Europe and I loved it. I had such a great time that in 2007 I decided to go to Thailand for a month. Those trips were amazing and I had fallen in love with Asia and traveling on that continent. I wanted to see more of Asia. Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos and the Philippines were all places I wanted to go and explore. China though was not part of that list. So if the desire to travel was a motivation, but China wasn't on the list, then why did I choose China? Well, to answer that question, we have to go back to 2005. Like I said, in 2005, my family and I visited friends in Malaysia. But 2005 was also the year I went back to school. In 2004, I took a gap year to figure out what I wanted to do. Sometime in the spring of 2005, I decided I wanted to be a teacher. I learned more about the profession, found out what I needed to do to be able to start a program, and in September of the same year, I started my degree in education. After a year or two, I really knew that education was my thing and that I wanted to pursue a career in this area. And I also knew that I wanted to combine my love for traveling with teaching. So my goal was to graduate after four years and pursue a career. And if possible, that career was going to be abroad. To increase my chances of finding a job abroad, I spent a semester abroad in Finland. There, my dream to live and work abroad became stronger. My love for traveling also grew. During my time in Finland, I went on trips to Russia, Stockholm, Finland, Estonia and more. I really had a great time in Finland and I was kind of sad to leave the country and all the people behind. Especially because I had to go back to the Netherlands and do my final teaching practice and work on this massive portfolio that I had to fill with all kinds of proof that I had become a qualified teacher. Fast forward to 2009 and to my graduation. After a couple of years of hard work, I graduated with a Bachelor of Education and I was ready to go into the world and pursue my dreams. Well, that was easier said than done. I wrote numerous letters to schools abroad, but none of them were eager to hire me. Not surprising with the little to no experience I had. So after some time of writing letters and sending out resumes, I shifted my focus from international schools and I started to look for other teaching programs abroad. While I was looking for options to work and travel abroad, I worked as a substitute teacher. 
This routine burnt me out quickly. I didn't have my own classroom, saw new children every day, and had an irregular income and work schedule. After a couple of months of substituting, I sat down and reflected on my dreams and my life in the city. I realized that if I wanted to make some of my dreams, like working abroad and traveling for a longer time, come true, I had to go for it and just do it. There was nothing that was holding me back. I was single, I had savings, and I had no real responsibilities. So if I wanted to try and make this happen, this was the time. So after realizing that, I started and I took the first baby steps that would help me to make my dreams come true. Earlier, I had realized that finding a job at an international school wasn't going to happen with the little experience and language skills that I had. So I had to rethink and refocus. As I was researching, I came across programs in China that offered internships positions for people with limited teaching experience. Most of the programs I saw online were internships for about six months or a semester and didn't require you to be a native English speaker. This seemed like the perfect solution for me, considering I didn't want to commit to a job for an entire year. One of the programs I came across was Travel and Teach in China. Like I said earlier, I didn't have any plans or desire to come to China. My opinion of China was shaped by Western news and I didn't think it would be a good country to visit or work in. I was hesitant at first, but as I started to do more research, I slowly started to change my mind. And I thought, if I have this dream and I want to experience adventure, why would I not just jump into the unknown and immerse myself in a country I've never been to, a culture I don't know, a language that I don't speak, versus going to a country that I've already been to? So after considering pros and cons, I decided to just follow my heart, my dream and my desire. There wasn't much holding me back, so what could go wrong? After a few months of taking the TEFL course, getting vaccinations, applying for my visa and more, the moment was finally there. I was ready to leave the Netherlands and start a new adventure in China. It was on August 19, 2010 that I got on the plane that would bring me to Beijing. The rest is history. After 10 years of living here and working in education, I thought I would share more about my life here in China to help others that are in the same situation that I was in in 2010. I read many blogs about China and those blogs really helped me. So now I want to pay it forward and that is why I have my channel and that is one of the goals that I have with my channel. I want to show a more realistic view of China and allow people to form their own opinions about the country. I'm honest in my negative and positive experiences here in this amazing country and I really hope that my videos will help people to understand China better. Thank you for watching and listening to my story. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet but you want to know more about my life here and my opinion about China, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!